Yo, what's up? What is good? This is the uh, wood shop Willie version of Cine 230 Remix Cultures. I'm, I've actually converted my uh, little barn to a little wood shop, doing a bunch of cool stuff, uh, building some cedar furniture and doing some pretty dope jiggies out. Some nice uh, cedar cookies here. So cut these, slab them out. You can see they're cracking already. So anyways, we're gonna talk about public domain. I know we've already spent some time talking about this and I just wanna spend uh, a little more you know, time rapping about this stuff because uh, I think it's important just to you know, talk a little bit through what it is, um, how it works, and some of the nuances of it. Um, I think we all know that, you know, what public domain is once copyright limited times runs out, you know, uh, the work becomes ours, it becomes society's. We can do whatever we want with it. And it fulfills this balance, if you remember back to the first week of the scales where the balance between uh, creators in, in society. So I think this is the important part is that things fall into the public domain and that, you know, we can actually use them. You know, I think that's, that's really important. So um, it comes from the Statute of Anne, Wink Hick Nudge, you probably want to know that, right? It comes from, uh, you know, um, an English law, the Statute of Anne was developed um, and incorporated the concept of the public domain into our constitution. Okay, um, basically, you know, uh, means you can do whatever you want with the work without giving anybody credit. It's yours, it's ours, kumbaya, you know. Um, you know, uh, I do want to reiterate that, you know, up until 1998, uh, things fell into the public domain after life of the author plus 50 years or 75 years for corporations and then the copyright term extension act was enacted um, on behalf of the walt disney company the church of scientology Ger george gershwin's estate uh, dr seuss's estate etc okay um, so what essentially happened was everything that was set to pass into the public domain in 1999 was instead frozen um, that's no Disney joke or pun there until 2019. So you can look at this chart. Now this chart is a little bit wrong because it's a little bit old, but it comes from the comic book that I'd ask you to uh, read through. Now you can look at, you know, on the uh, right side, you can see the date of the work, when it's from, and see when it's protected from. I think this is a little bit helpful. It gives you a little bit of of a sense of some of the nuances of stuff. So if you look towards the end where it says, created before 1178, but published between then and uh, 2002, it gets protection from 1178. I mean, it just kind of gives you a sense of, you know, um, you know, anything published from 1964 to 77 has copyright when published with notice works published without notice are in the public domain. So again, what that means is this. There could be works that were published from, you know, um, the mid-60s, mid-70s, and even into the 80s that were published without a copyright notice on them, and then they're in the public domain. So, you know, again, while most of the things, if it was, if works that were published had a copyright notice on them, if you did not, okay, an example of this is the Young Lords, um, image that was used by Shepard Fair, if you remember back to our street art and graffiti week, um, you know, he was able to use that because it was in public domain because they published that art without a copyright notice. So what I want you to just get from this is that there's a, nu there's a nuance to this. So it's not just everything made before 1925 minus sound recordings, um, but it, there could be newer stuff that's in the public domain depending on some factors. So, you know, there's things that you could stumble across in libraries and in archives and in shoe boxes and at flea markets. Yo, I have found, or, or, or yard sales. I have found some really dope stuff at flea markets and yard sales. Um, valuable stuff, images and, and sounds and stuff that you'd never think, you know, um, were there, were there. 
Um, but again, you know, I just, what I'm saying though is like, there's nuance to public domain. So we know that anything that was published before 1925, it has to be, remember, published is so key. It has to be published um, before 1925 or in the pu public domain. You know, um, the, the nuance here is that if they were unpublished, depending on when the author died, they could be still protected by life plus 70 years. Or a corporation could have made something before 1925. Uh, and let's say they made the work in 1920. Remember, corporations have 95 years or 120 years from date of, pub, uh, from date of creation. Um, so what that means is they have 95 years from date of publishing, but they get an extra 25 years if something sits in the vault. So if something sits in the vault at Paramount Studios for uh, 25, you know, years or 20 years, they still, once they publish it, they get that 95 years. So it still protects, so it was made, you know, earlier, but it's still protected. So, um, you know, you know, again, so there are some nuance to this, okay? So if it's unpublished, it could still, even though it's pre-1925, it could still be protected. Um, works made from 1925, to uh, 1963 without renewal. So from, from 1925 to 1963, you had to renew your copyrights. If you didn't do that, things, they would fall into the public domain. An instance of this, um, I believe, was Happy Birthday to You, which was protected by copyright law and Time Warner was extracting royalties for when anybody would sing this, you know, that's why they would sing the stupid fucking song at Olive Garden uh, instead of Happy Birthday or in movies, you know, well, they didn't renew the copyright on that and, and they were still taking royalties for decades and decades. Someone found I was in the public domain a long time ago. You don't need to know all this stuff. Like, you don't need to know these dates or anything. But what I want you to know is that there is nuance to this stuff. So you could do a little research and find out that, um, you know, a sound recording that was published but wasn't renewed in, you know, it was published in the 50s but wasn't renewed could be public domain. You know, and then you can put a PDM mark on it, you know, Creative Commons PDM mark. Um, if someone published a work from 1924 to 1977, or after 1924 to, to 1977, without a copyright notice on it, it's in the public domain. And anything made from 1978, okay, until 1989, right, if published without a copyright notice on it, could be in the public domain. They had five years to put a, you know, um, to register their copyright and put a notice on it, essentially. Um, you know, it, what we, up until 1988, or starting in 1989, was the first year you didn't have to have a copyright notice on your work. So what I'm saying is, there could be stuff from the 80s that could be public domain because someone didn't put a copyright notice on it and they published it. So I just want you to know that there's nuance to this stuff. Um, unpublished works by authors who died before 1944 are in the public domain. Typically, they'd have a lot longer, but if they die before 1944, technically what happens is they don't get the 20 years of copyright protection that the Copyright Term Act of 1998 added to copyright, so their work would have expired and be in the public domain. And again, you know this, anything made by the federal government that would typically be copyrightable is in the public domain. That's what Woodshop Willie says.